You are watching Bet Safe. We are talking Formula One with myself, Pete Colley, and of course, the veritable Mr. Johnny Herbert. Uh, before we talk about Canada, let's talk about Monaco. And uh, what was a very interesting race? Well, first of all, before we talk about the winner, what happened to Lewis Hamilton? Hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a, a shock, wasn't it? Uh, we have to only have to go back to Russia. Similar sort of scenario, we saw that. Go back a little bit further again, Singapore, a couple of years back when uh, they just had no performance whatsoever. And uh, Lewis struggled all weekend, as he did in Russia. And I don't think there was any proper understanding of why. And the, you know, the guy who actually did better out of the two again was Valtteri. Valtteri seemed mm. to be okay. Yes, it wasn't quite as competitive as they needed to be to get a race win, let's say. But yeah, it's, it's quite worrying. And it's, it's what the link is their street circuits to a, to a degree. Where are we going next? It's a sort of a street circuit sort of again, in a bit of a sort of a park in the middle. So yeah, it was an unbelievable situation to see Lewis in. But again, Ferrari, you know, Sebastian, but Kimi getting the pole position, a little bit of sort of did they, didn't they in the race Ferrari? Did they choose Sebastian over Kimi? But it was great. It was a great situation for us to sort of watch, you know, some sort of world champions, a few ex-world champions battling it out, bit of a sort of surprise as, as we said with with Lewis not being where we expected him to be uh, basically through the whole weekend but again Sebastian did the job didn't he, he was just so so consistent all the way through, did what he needed to do in the race, controlled it once he got in head uh, and has got that race win again. What does Lewis Hamilton do with this now, does he, does he just say right, right off, let's move on to Montreal, start again or or do you have to go through, you know, do you have to go and watch what happened? Do you have to learn from it? What, what does he do? Well, they've definitely got to learn from it because they've got to understand what has been going wrong. You know, we're not talking of just Monaco. We're talking about, as I said, mm. Russia before. That's two in a season, something that we haven't seen from Mercedes ever in the last sort of three years. So they've got to really sort of analyse it from from the team's perspective but then Lewis has got to do the same thing he's got to be involved with trying to find out what it is that's going on you know he can give them the the feedback of how the car was feeling underneath him compared to what it has been feeling when it's been working correctly so that's where there's going to be a lot of sort of intense analyzing of everything that happened during the, during that weekend it would have been happening over the weekend because mm. they knew straight away that it wasn't quite working uh, as good as it should be but we're going to a, a racetrack that is won five times Lewis um, Mercedes have always been very good there even if the power was in the back of a McLaren Kimi Raikkonen winning back there in 2006 I think it was so the Mercedes has always been very very strong there so the track suits Lewis because he's won the five it suits the Mercedes because of the power advantage maybe they've still got at the moment so they should be going there actually thinking well this is going to be a positive race weekend but they have to find out what went wrong in Monaco because that is going to be an important thing because if it does raise its ugly head they've got to be able to squash it and and stop it from happening all the way through the weekend because this is going to be a very important part of the season where we can just see that Ferrari works mm. everywhere we go to at the moment. Is it the cars? Is that the difference right now, do you think? Well, well there's an element of it. And I think, you know, every time we, we sit down and we discuss it, mm. we always talk about, well, the Mercedes should have the edge when it comes down to qualifying. And that started to dwindle away at the moment. You know, we've seen sort of Sebastian get a, get, get a couple of poles. We've seen, seen Kimi now get that pole position in a circuit that if you have a good balance in a car which is really all that Monaco is all about you can actually then prove how quick you can be that's what the Ferrari did prove in qualifying and it mm -hmm. proved it once again when it came down to the race so it's important for for Mercedes to stop that I don't know consistency that is really sort of testing Mercedes to the full at the moment because Ferrari are doing a very good job I have to say the drivers are, are doing very well. We've got Kimi getting that pole, so it looks as if he's better off. Yeah. A very grumpy man after the race, I have to say, with the decision, I think, that was made with the, with the strategy. He was not, not, a, not a happy boy. But it, but it showed that he's still got that speed, and a lot of people were talking you know, in positive, positive things about Kimi. So Sebastian can see that at the same time. But he's got to go to Canada, and he's got to be able to replicate that at the same time. But of course, he's not just up against his team. I, I do believe the Mercedes should be back to its competitive ways. Was Kimi Raikkonen right to be disappointed? Was it a clear Ferrari strategy 
uh, to favour Vettel. It's very difficult to read when you sort of were watching the race. You know, Kimi came on the radio and actually sort of said, you know, am I coming into pit? Now, I don't know if that was, you know, am, am, am I coming in? Mm. Are you telling me to come in yeah. as a surprise? Or was it sort of making sure, yeah, am I going to come in this lap? If you look at his face after the race, it obviously was a disappointment that it, it was the strategy that cost him the chance of keeping in front of Sebastian and then maybe controlling the race at the end of the day. So I can see where he was coming from. There hasn't been really anything come out of Ferrari saying, yes, we did it for Sebastian. I think Lewis Hamilton has said, yes, the, the number one in the team is, is Sebastian Vettel. But that's because Lewis and Sebastian are fighting for the championship and Kimi is secondary from Lewis's point of view. And for Sebastian, Kimi is secondary as well because he's not fighting him for the championship. It's between the two guys at the moment, Lewis and, and Sebastian. So when you look at it, possibly Ferrari did do it you know, as a strategy to get um, Sebastian at the, at the front of the pack to get that race win. In my heart, I always want the, the best man to win over that, that, that weekend. But of course, a team is always going to do it if it's going to sort of make it more positive for them. When they come out of Monaco, when they're either driving back home or flying, mm. flying home, they're actually going to be going, actually, that, that worked out for us very, very well. We got a race win from a man who's leading the championship and the guy we're fighting against wasn't there that weekend. So it was a very, very positive time for, for Ferrari. And I think if it ever comes down to that situation again, probably we're probably going to see a similar, I think a similar situation with strategy. And good for Red Bull. They, they sort of closed the gap between the uh, the top two with Ferrari and Mercedes, didn't they? With uh, Max Verstappen and of course with Car Ricardo as well. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if they can do that at a, at a power track. We, we know that sort of tag Heuer, Renault is, is still not on the same level as the Ferrari or the, mm -hmm. or the Mercedes. It was great to see Red Bull sort of a little bit more in the mix. The circuit, as I said, with the Ferrari, if you get a good balance, that is you can make so much time on those narrow streets of Monaco because you can actually place the car. If you've got a car that is either understeering, we've, we've heard Kimi say mm -hmm. that before as well. If you've got a car that understeers, you can't get to the apex of the corner. And if you can't get to the apex of the corner, you're gonna run a bit wide on the exit. And what's on the exit? A barrier. So you're gonna to have to back out and then that's where your speed and your momentum doesn't really come into play. So the car worked very well for Red Bull. So we know that that side of it's okay. We, we do know that sort of Renault have still got to up their game. They've still got to have a, an upgrade package that puts them really on the same level as that Ferrari and the Mercedes. And they go into a track where you have to have that top, top speed. You have to have that power to get you there. And I think that's something where we might see them struggle. But then we go back a couple of years, you know, we saw Daniel Ricciardo win a race. We saw Jensen yeah. Button further back, going from the front to the back, to the front to the back, and eventually was able to pass uh, Sebastian Vettel on the last lap to win the race. So Canada can throw up a lot of jokers, shall we say. The weather can come into play. And if you have those sort of ingredients that come in, that Red Bull can come straight back into play. But you're right, it did look a better package mm. in Monaco. Now they've got to be able to take it to a totally different type of track in Canada. Who was your driver of the week then, following um, Monaco? I thought Sergio Perez did a very good job. Um, it was obviously a good job from Valtteri once mm -hmm. again. I think the man who stood out for me personally, I think, was Carlos Sainz. Uh, did a great qualifying, seventh I think it was, and then his ability to sort of finish uh, you know, in that top, top eight was absolutely brilliant. So I think he sort of showed that talent that I think everybody knows about. Um, and it's the consistency that I think he's showing as well. So Sergio did a great job, but I think Carlos Sainz was definitely the man that just stood out because it's a driver's track, a racing driver's track, and that's where you shine, and he definitely did shine. Well, look at the points then, following Monaco. Uh, Sebastian Vettel on 129, Lewis Hamilton on 102. Now, that's the first time somebody's pushed out in a head. Um, yeah. Valtteri Bottas, 75, Kimi Raikkonen, 67. But it's Sebastian Vettel, isn't it, really, that's standing out there when you look at it? Yeah, it is at the moment. And that's, you know, obviously from that, that, that consistency that I've been talking about, but it's also with the ability for the team to get the race wins for the right man for this championship. But, 
but we are going to have, a, I think, a different situation when we go to Canada. I'd be very, very surprised that the Mercedes doesn't work mm -hmm. around the, uh, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve just because Lewis loves it. Those five, five wins is something that's very special. The one man he's probably going to have to worry about is probably his team man. Remember, we go back to Russia. He's done very well there in the Williams. Yeah. We're going back to it, the same situation. The last three years, the two years, sorry, the last two years, Valtteri's finished third in a Williams. Now you've, now he's in a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. He might come alive again like he did in, in Russia. So he's going to be a bit of a threat to Lewis. He's all, also going to be a bit of a threat to, to, the, to the Ferraris at the same time. But that adds to the weekend coming up. It adds that we've got probably those four guys again who are going to be as tight as anything going into the qualifying. Of course, then in, when it comes down to the race at the same time, it looks brilliant because... As we sit here at the moment, I don't really know who's mm. going to come out of this ahead. I'm probably going to go just that little bit, what we saw in Russia, where Valtteri did a cracking job and he's going to a circuit he loves. But then, you know, he's got a, you know, up against Kimi, who's won there before, 2006. Mm -hmm. We've also got Daniel Ricciardo, who's, who's won there as well. We've got Sebastian Vettel, who has won there. But then the five-time winner, obviously, is, um, is Lewis Hamilton as well. So those guys like that track and they go well at it. That explains the odds a little bit with Sebastian Vettel 5-7 to seven, uh, to take the championship. Lewis Hamilton 75, Valtteri Bottas 33-1. to one. Wow. I mean, he's, he's only on, when you look at it, he's on 75 points, Lewis Hamilton's on 102. You know, that's, that's big odds if you fancy the little. Yeah, well, I think, I think as, as we spoke after Russia, his, his race win is always, that first one is always very, very special. Mm -hmm. A driver normally feeds off that in a very positive way. Then we go to Monaco and he outperformed Lewis mm -hmm. once again. So his strength is starting to come through. We're going to a track that maybe he might get his second race win and then things sort of, the dynamic starts to change and all the pressure seems to shift to, to his teammate, Lewis Hamilton. But then the pressure is also there for Ferrari and, and Sebastian Vettel especially because suddenly you've got this third person coming into play. So if he can get that ball rolling, not a bad little bit, that is it. No, the constructors odds. You've got Mercedes seven to ten, Ferrari at six to five. But let let's move ahead to uh, to Montreal. Yeah. And talk about the man that's out there in front because it, Sebastian Vettel just goes about his business. Win or lose, everybody talks about Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, that puts him in a good place, doesn't it, Sebastian Vettel? Really? And uh, does he like that? Do you think? Does he like just moving along, just quietly, getting on with his business? Yeah, I think he does. And why does he like that? Because you're rightly, you're rightly saying that everybody talks about Lewis. He just gets on the, in the car, mm -hmm. he gets out there, he goes as fast as he, as he ever has done. You know, he's a, he's a four-time world champion, a four-time world champion that probably has never really been given the, the real, I don't know, pat on the back that he, that he deserves. Because everyone said, well, he was in a Red Bull, that's why he won you've always got to be in a good car to be able to to win races and i think what he's proving once again he's got a good car that's working very very well and all these wins that he's get, getting now and all these points that are sort of just edging him away from lewis hamilton he's going to be looking across at lewis when they're in a driver's briefing or on the track parade or whatever and he'll be going so he'll be just shifting all that sort of energy negative energy mm -hmm. across to the other side of the of the of the room because the important thing is being able to have the the mental strength to grow with what ferrari have been able to give him at the moment and then just push all that pressure completely away from you and you just do the job that you do best which is to drive a car fast but most importantly consistent and that's what sebastian is able to do so i think the way this championship is sort of turning up is the consistency of Sebastian Vettel and Ferrari when it comes down to the car work and any type of track, but the strategy that the calls that have come into play as well. You could also say maybe you know Mercedes haven't quite been very you know good enough with their strategy at the same time. So there's elements that are just swinging in the right direction for Sebastian and Ferrari, but they can certainly do this, and very quickly they can dart mm -hmm. in another direction. But 
the energy is very, very positive at the moment. You only had to look in the garage in, in Monaco after the, after the race win. The energy was electric. Typical Italians, when they were they're doing the national anthem, the Italian na national anthem, all the mechanics are singing and smiling and being Latin and arms going over there. <laughs> but it's brilliant because that is part and parcel of what the whole bubble of Formula One mm -hmm. is all about. They're a very small part of that bubble, but at the moment they're on the top of it. So, you know, it's looking very, very good for them but we're going to have to wait and see if they can just keep that momentum going, that development uh, work that's going to be coming into play because Mercedes, for sure, are going to be working probably double hard now to, to get themselves back in, in contention. They're not actually out of contention as it is. And the more you talk about it, I mean, the more you realise that Montreal is just an absolutely massive race for Lewis Hamilton because yeah. after the last two, if you start asking yourself questions, that's when things can start to go wrong, isn't it? That, that is definitely definitely a, a, a right analogy as far as how he goes into the weekend after a sort of a bad weekend like we saw in Monaco mm -hmm. is those five wins it's a track that he that he mm -hmm. that he knows he's com is, 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 is comfortable on when you're comfortable with the circuit it just makes the driving side that much easier and it's one of those tracks it's got a lot of long long straights with chicanes generally at the end of them um, because you're on pretty much low downforce the car moves around a lot it's a little bit bumpy into the last turn for example where the wall of champions is on the outside so the car sort of floats around but if you're with one with the car and that floating around it just gives you that ability to just float it and direct it in the right way to then poke it through the corner and out on the exit skimming that wall of champions for example and then carrying that momentum all the way through and that's i think the the track that Lewis has been able to always get the best from himself, even in a car that hasn't probably actually been the best, to be to be perfectly frank. So he's always been challenged from Nico Rosberg, for example. That's something that he's always had uh, from Jensen Button, his teammate, but we're way back in, in the McLaren days. So the positivity that he's going to be able to carry into it is something that should drive him, should spur him on and give him in, make him in a better place after a difficult weekend in Monaco so I expect him to be pretty much up the sharp end. Well, the last two that he's won here um, he started in pole position so that's going to be massive as well isn't it I mean I know you said Monaco's key you've got to be at the front yeah. to avoid any trouble is this similar or not? Similar in a way yes although there's all those long straights there is the DRS that we that we have which is not as powerful as it was in the past so the overtaking that we used to have in Canada I think is going to be less you're gonna to have to work probably five times harder as a driver to get yourself in the right position to get yourself to be able to overtake down those long straights you're not going to blast past them like you did which i think is a good thing lewis is a racer sebastian is a racer kimi we know is a racer at the same time and i think valtteri is a very good racer at the same time so we've got these four guys on a track that generally has been easy to overtake now it seems to be the opposite way around where it's going to be the best driver's skill to place the car in the right place, to be able to sort of gain an advantage from the from the pass that he needs to take control of the race. So pole position will be very, very important once again, maybe more important than it has been before, just because the DRS looks as if it's not gonna be as powerful as it has been before. So that pole position fight and that build up to that pole position fight is gonna be so so important for those drivers and those teams to get the right car when they go into qualifying itself so it's going to be i think one hell of a battle which is great who do you fancy then to come in let's say first and second here because i think first i think i know what you're going to say but i'd like to know who you think is going to come in second um i'm, I'm probably going to have to go with the the consistency man and that's going to be sebastian vettel mm -hmm. because the engine's obviously working very well the power unit the chassis is obviously working very, very well. It works on fast and it works on slow. That's been proven now. But we're going to a track where the car is always moving around, as I was explaining before. And Monaco is a track that's sort of at lower speeds, but you still have the car moving around just because the, the, the grip and the surface doesn't generate the normal amount of grip that you'd get on a circuit like Canada or maybe in Silverstone, for example. So I think that consistency is going to show to be a very positive thing for Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel. Who do you think second, do you say? 
Well, that's where I'm going. I'm talking second. Yeah. I'm talking second. Right, okay. Because who am I going to talk about winning? Yeah. That's the main thing. I'm going to go for the man that I chose in Russia. The man that is confident on a track in a car that hasn't been the most uh, performance enhanced compared to his competitors. That's Valtteri Bottas. I honestly think we're going to see him come alive once again because I think that's where we're going to see this resurgence of a, a possible another race win and another twist in the championship. Well, let's have a look at the odds then. Uh, we've got Lewis Hamilton, 7-5, to five, Sebast uh, Sebastian Vettel, 7-5, to five, <laughs> uh, and Valtteri Bottas, reflecting what you have said, 7-1, to one, yeah. Kimi Raikkonen, 13-1, to one, Max Verstappen, 28-1, to one, and Ricardo 30-1. to one. Wow. What do you think? Is there well, those Red there? Bulls are quite interested, aren't yeah. they? Because, as I said, it's not all about... If, it, if we have a dry weekend, then I think we can I think comfortably say it's going to be a Mercedes or Ferrari. If we then throw in a little bit of weather, um, that is where the whole dynamic sort of shifts because you need a car that works and is driver-friendly. We know the Ferrari is able to do that. The Mercedes does seem a little bit on edge most of the time. It's more difficult to drive. And then the, th the third car is the Red Bull that, like Monaco, proves that the car is very driver friendly. The drivers are able to push that limit of the car, feel where that limit is. And when you have a pretty much a low downforce track, a car that's moving around when it's, when it's dry, it's going to move around one hell of a lot more when it's in a, in, a, in a damp, wet condition. And I think that's where we've seen, you know, Max and uh, his teammate. Danny Ricardo have strong performances when we've had that wet weather. So we, I think they can come into it, but they need that wet weather. I don't really honestly see that they're going to have a chance if it's totally dry all weekend. Throw a bit of rain into it, which is very, very possible in Canada. Then I think we've got someone else in the mix and we might see the old Mad Max come back into, back into form. You can't rule out his teammate either. Johnny, incisive as ever. <laughs> We're off now to fly to Montreal. Uh, interestingly, with Canada geese uh, in a V formation. But you can check out all the latest odds on betsafe.com for a host of Canadian Grand Prix specials. And remember, you've got to be in it to win it.